What's up guys, Simone Fan 101 here, and this is my review of Wrestle Kingdom 12. I'm sorry I didn't upload sooner, but uh, I've had a couple things I've had to do, uh, some delays. Now I'm home all by myself. I got no one to bug me or anything. I don't have to do anything right now, so now will be a perfect time. Get this right out of the way. Um, Wrestle Kingdom 12... I'd say this is ma this is going to be the show of the year. I don't see WWE, I'm sure shit TNA, or not even Lucha Underground topping this show. And Lucha Underground came pretty damn close last year with uh, Ultima Lucha Trace. And now with Ultima Lucha, uh, with Ultima Lucha, with Lucha Underground coming back, it's going to provide, in terms of quality, stiff competition for New Japan. But, um, with that being said... Well, my opinion, the best show of the year. Why? Because it's one of the few shows I give a 10 out of 10. Just getting that right the hell out of the way. Um, so let's, let's start into it, shall we? we uh, there's the pre-show match, which it's technically a dark match, but you could watch it with English commentary on New Japan World. Um, it is very similar to what WWE used to do for many years until they made an actual match with the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. It's called the New Japan Rumble. And they had 21 participants this year, although we didn't know how many participants they had until uh, the final man came out. Um, so, uh, yeah, let, let's let's get started. Um, so, uh, oh, by the way, I have to mention this: the attendance for uh, Wrestle Kingdom 12. Now, this is now for WrestleMania. Not that compared to WrestleMania, it's not amazing. But the attendance. For Wrestle Kingdom 12 is 34,995, which is up, uh, which has is over 8,800 people from from uh, Wrestle Kingdom 11 last year. So, um, so uh, yeah, of course, if this is WWE, uh, if, if it was WWE, they'd say 50,000 for the hell of it because, of course, they're idiots. Um, Anyway, New Japan Rumble. Um, it was a it was a nice little match. It was out of all the matches on the card, it was the worst match. That does not mean it was bad. It was meant. It wasn't meant to be a great match. It was just meant to be a little bit of fun and have a uh, the rest of the re the rest of the roster and maybe some new guys and returning guys uh, who aren't doing anything on the show have a match. Uh, a couple of guys I wish could have had matches on the main card. Either because of name recognition or what else. Um, so we started out this uh, we started out this match with um, with God, what's his name? His first, his last name's Kit Kitamura. Ah, uh, man, what is it? Uh, Katsuya Kitamura. That was his name. And by the way, uh, in New Japan here, they. Um, they, because I, I looked up some of the names on online, um, and they have different names and what they said in New Japan. So maybe, so may, so obviously there were a couple of name changes here. So forgive me if I might pronounce them by the name that I found online. So, um, so just don't hold that against me. Um, so we started out with uh, Katsuya Kitamura and Bushi, member of Suzuki Goon. Um, and, uh, and, uh, they, they got a little bit back and forth. Bushi went for a choke. Uh, next came Delirious, who is a Ring of Honor star, and I think is a booker in Ring of Honor, if I recall correctly. Um, he came in, tried to, try to chop some people. To no avail, he just got his ass kicked. Out next came Leo Tonga, who, according to New Japan, I don't know whether or not this is it, even true. But according to New Japan, he is the brother of Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. Now, uh, if that is indeed true, that he's the brother of Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, that makes him the son of Haku. And of course, and I, out of all the guys, he looks like the Haku from like back in the 80s. I mean, he's, he has the hair. Unlike, uh, unlike Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, he actually looks like, like a young Haku. Not nearly as Big, though, I will say that. Haku was a massive dude back in the 80s. I still would not want to screw with Haku because I just don't want to... I want to live. I don't want to... 
I don't, I don't want to be killed by Haku. Um, n out next came uh, and, and by the way, Leo Tonga uh, basically was had like a was like a big man, so he worked big man. Um, out next came Manabu Nakanishi, which apparently I think in Japan has a nickname called Planet Nakanishi, which is uh, which is appropriate. The guy's a big guy, not so much like Tong like Leo Tonga. But, like, a big guy, like, more, like, in the heavyweight area. Kind of like a young, kind of like a, I would say, a young Vader. He is younger than Vader, but you know what I mean. Um, next came uh, Chase Owens, who, uh, according to Kevin Kelly, has recently joined Bullet Club. I will, I already knew that part, that he joined Bullet Club, but apparently he's he also calls himself an honorary Samoan, much like the Tongas. Uh, guys, the, clearly he's not Samoan, but it's a it's a heel storyline. Supposed to get some heat. They're doing a good job. Uh, the the first man eliminated actually was um, Delirious. He got hit by he got hit by Owens with a uh, with a uh, package pile driver. Kevin Owens, old finisher on the indie scene. Um, oh, by the way, for I almost forgot the rules of the of the match. Uh, are that you could that you have to be eliminated by either being pinned, submitted, or going over the top rope. So basically, they're mixing in both the rules of Aztec Warfare and the Royal Rumble for this one match. Interesting. Um, out next came Yuji Nagata. Now, out of all the guys who I wanted to be on the main card, this is the guy I wanted to be on the main card the most because Yuji Yuji Nagata is is awesome. Uh Yuji Nagata went in there and just was a house of fire. He was the first guy who who got a real major pop. And by the way, this match for a lot of it, a lot of it, the match was quiet. Uh, Yuji Nagata got the first major pop of the night. Um, he went in there, hit, uh, just traded strikes with uh, Nakanishi, which was nice to watch. Um, and uh, out next. Came uh, Taka Michinoku, and another member of Suzuki Goon. Uh, Leo got eliminated during his entrance. I forget how. Um, so after anyway, what happened is uh, okay. So here's what happened. I, this may have been in his entrance or right as Taka Michinoku came in. So Yuji Nagata cradled uh, Nakanishi for the pin. And then, as Nakanishi got pinned, they rolled over on Nagata, and uh, Nakanishi, uh, Owens, and I think Kitamura all like dogpiled on him to get to to pin him, which made the crowd cra the, the the crowd sad because you know they love Yuji Nagata. Um. So uh, so Bre and uh, Owens. Yeah, I keep saying Owens like Kevin Owens. Chase Owens uh, got another package pile driver in Kitamura, eliminated him. Uh, we came down for the moment to Takamichi Noku and um, and uh, yeah. Oh shoot, I'm an idiot. I, I knew I was missing something. Okay, I mentioned earlier Bushi was a member of Suzuki Goon. Uh, Bushi got eliminated by, uh, Manabu Nakanishi when he came in. Um, he, he got him, like, a torture rack position, just threw him over the top rope onto Delirious. I forgot about that. Uh, so, just getting that right out of the way. Um. Next, uh, who, the, the person who came out for number nine, because remember, at this point, it was only Takamichi Noku and Chase Owens. Number nine, out came... A uh, guy by a uh, guy I'm not too familiar with called y Yoshinobi Yo yeah y Yoshinobu Kanam Kanamaru. They to help out they usually just call him Kanamaru. Um. So uh, what happened is uh, Kanamaru is also a member of Suzuki Goon. Uh, came in he misted. He spit mist. I no 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 wait no no. Hang on, he didn't do that. But he did go in there. And it was and it was a two on one attempt uh, over Owens. 
Chase Owens did try to fight back. I'm thinking of the next entrant, El Desperado, also a member of Suzuki Goon. God damn, everyone's a member of Suzuki Goon. Damn it. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. I can barely keep up with who's a member. I know who's a member of Suzuki Goon and who the Bull Club guys are. It's Chaos. Those are the guys, like, I, I half the time I'm like, who's a member of Chaos? I know Okada, and now Jay White, and now Switchblade Jay White. But there are, the, there are other guys, and I forget who they are. I think uh, Huruki Goto is another one. Anyway, um, and Yoshihashi. I, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, um, El Desperado came out. He had, now Suzuki Goon had a 3 one advantage to Chase Owens. Ka uh, Kanemaru, I, I was right. Kanemaru uh, misted um, Chase Owens. I thought it was, I thought for sure it was Desperado. But Kanemar did miss um, Owens and eliminated him. Uh, number 11, out came Jushin Thunder Liger, who by far had one of the biggest pops of the match. Probably the biggest. Liger came in, hit Shotez on everyone. Everyone was going. Um, number 12, oh, by, before number 12 came out... Um, uh, they, 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 apparently the story is that they're trying to rip off Jushin Thunder Liger's mask. Out next came, appropriately enough, Tiger Mask. And he also got a good pop. Not as big as, a Th Jushin Liger's, but, but he, he definitely got a pop. He got into the ring. Um, of course, Desperado went after his mask. But then eventually, Tiger Mask turned around on him, and Tiger Mask started ripping off Desperado's mask. That was funny. Um... Out next came his his name is Gino Gambino. However, in in the commentary they called him Mr. Juicy, which is a nickname of his, uh, another wrestling name, and they called him like Juicy Gambino or something like that. Uh, even the, uh, apparently Kevin Kelly either they're trying to make him a new name on the roster or Kevin Kelly just made it made it up. But his real name is but his real wrestling name is Gino Gambino. Getting that out of the way. Um. Tiger, it's, as Gino Gambino was making his entrance, Tiger Mask and Desperado ripped each other's masks off. And uh, here's the thing. Uh, Kanemaru got pinned. Liger got pinned. However, Tiger Mask and Desperado did not get pinned. Um, but they, because they, I didn't see a visual pinfall. I didn't see a pinfall. I didn't see a submission. But those are two guys who got their masks removed. So I'm assuming instead of continuing the match, they're like, screw this, and basically eliminated themselves by saying, I forfeit. Uh, that's my guess. Uh, but there was no visual pin. So basically, in one fell swoop, Tiger Mask, Jushin Liger, Kanemaru, and El Desperado all got eliminated. And then Taka Michinoku... Um, Ta Taka Michinoku... Um, got eliminated by uh, Gino Gambino. Out number fourteen came Hanari, which I, for the look for the um for what I saw of him, I, I kind of liked Hanari. From what I heard, Hanari is um is a, was a young lion, basically uh, a wrestler in training. He's young lions are known as these guys who work on the outside of the ring. Um, in the red shirts, though, those are the young lions. Um. He came in, he fought Gino Gambino, who was by far the biggest and possibly fattest man in the whole match. Uh, no offense to him. Uh, out next came Yoshihashi. I remember Hashi getting a, a, a decent pop. Um, out number 16 came uh, David Finley. So, doing Fit Finley, his father Fit Finley proud. Um, he, uh, he gets a stunner. On um, on Gino Gambino and uh, he and Hanari got the pin on Gambino. Uh, Hashi then eliminated Hanari with a drop kick to the outside. Um, uh, after trying to eliminate him, then drop kicked him while he was still hung him with the rope. Uh, Finley then quickly pinned Hashi for the elimination. So basically, now we're down to Finley. Out next came Yujiro Takahashi, a uh, member of Bull Club, with that. With his, I'm assuming it's his wife dressed up in the the bunny costume that Ariana Grande had in that one music video of hers. Whatever happened to her? Um, 
Finley pretty much got eliminated almost immediately by Yujiro. <laughs> out next, and as he was celebrating with his woman on the outside, out next came the most likable guy in New Japan, Cheeseburger. Why he has that name, I don't know, but we'll deal with it. Uh, Yujiro attacked him. Uh, they were in the ring. Cheeseburger tried to fight. They even had a he even had a bulldog. Out next came Satoshi Kojima. Well-known wrestling name, probably a New Japan legend legend at this point, and uh, got definitely one of the bigger pops of the match. Probably the second biggest. Um, all, not to be outdone though. Out next came his partner and Tenkoji. Um, Hiroyoshi Tenzon, also former IWGP champion, also former main eventer, and also possibly former legend. Um, Tenzon, he, he's, he, he was he was awesome back in the day. He still is good. Uh, clearly, he's they're both older. Um, they they worked uh they they worked uh their opponents. They worked each other. Um. Number and then uh yeah got him I'm, I'm hang on a second sorry I haven't had lunch so I'm kind of like in the middle of it and besides trying to remember all the details of the New Japan Rumble is a little bit difficult it will get easier when I get to the real matches um but all uh, long story short Yujiro got eliminated uh out net um by, by a, I think he got hit I think he got hit by a by uh, the Kojima Lariat, which was his, which is his finisher, um, uh, and the, as he got eliminated, though out next came the last participant, former UWF star, retired wrestler, and cancer survivor, I believe, um, cancer survivor Matsuhi, Mats, Masahito Kakihara. Um, so it was Cheeseburger Kakihara against Tenkoji. Eventually, though, they got overpowered. Um, Tenkoji accidentally collided with each other. Both of them got eliminated by both Cheeseburger and Kakihara. So it just left Cheeseburger and Kakihara in the ring. Kaki, after a little bit of back and forth for about 30 seconds, Kakihara beat Cheeseburger with a leg sweep, pinned him, and yeah. Is it, it UWF, UFW? I'm. I forget which one it was. But either way, he was a former wrestler. He got cancer. He survived cancer. No one expected him to be there. Um, and some of the best booking of the night was with the Suzuki Gun people, the mask people, and Liger and Tiger Mask. Uh, the bit with Chase Owens and the ending with uh, Kakihara, uh, Kojima, and Tenzan, and of course Cheeseburger. Um, so it was a it was a decent little match. Not anything great, but it was never meant to be. I've gone on way too long about this. This is going to be a long sh review as it is, considering how great the show was. Uh, anyway, out next was the IWG and the oh, real opening match of the night. And when the actual pay-per-view started, IWGP Tag Team Champions were Punky 3K, Sho and Yo, uh, again, with Rocky Romero, against the Young Bucks, uh, Matt and Nick Jackson. Um... Sho and Yo came out like, with like freaking well, I'm not showing Yo. Uh, frig, uh, God, I, I for a second I was like, like Rocky Romero came out looking like a like like a leather jacket wearing Ghostbuster. He had like a gas tank on the back. He was spraying gas, which I don't know what kind of gas he's spraying. Nor do I want to know. Just uh, observation. So um. As the, so this was and this was a great match. And but one thing I'll say about it is that it wasn't your typical Young Bucks match where there's a bunch of high flying. Not saying there wasn't any high flying, but there was a bunch of high flying. Um, and um, yeah, there was a bunch of high flying. Uh, there was not a bunch of high flying. I should say it was very much a grounded style match, which. It was actually nice to see something different because uh, we eventually got that the high flying match with the uh, fatal four way match later on the night. This is the first time in a few years, believe it or not, that the tag t that the IWGP Junior Tag Team Titles was not on was not for um, 
It was not a multi-man match. I think last year it wasn't either, but I can't remember. Um, but anyway, the story of this match was Yo and Nick Jackson. Some point in the match, uh, 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 the story was both of them got their backs hurt at, uh, during the middle of the match. Um, but So that, that was the story of this match. Early on, um, Yo got a, a sharpshooter on, I'm assuming, Nick Jackson, while Matt Jackson got a sharpshooter on show that was that was nice and they then of course they both slapped the hell out of each other which i i kind of liked that was enjoyable um like i said like this match was very ground mat sort of mat based style tech mainly some technical wrestling uh but but sprinkled with bits of high flying there was high flying here but it was very grounded in its high flying it knew it was a nicely well-paced match um yo and show Hit dives to the outside of the floor. This is the spot where in kayfabe, uh, Yo got his back hurt. Yo was the one with the Yo in this match was the one with the green hair and silver tights, while Sho was the one with the white hair and uh, gold tights. Um, I think it was Nick Jackson. He hit a German suplex onto Yo on the apron, which looked like that probably had to hurt a lot. Um, uh, by the way, Rocky Romero, who's like their coach in a way, um, he got power bombed by uh, Matt Jackson, I believe, on the uh, on on the walkway. That took him out of the match. That took him out of most of the match, except for the last couple of minutes. But in terms of actually interfering or anything, that pretty much took him out of the match. Um, the Bucks then continued to work on the back, but they did it very smartly. They didn't just work straight up heat on the back uh, on the back like they would like you would in WWE where there's like five minute like knee hole to the back they actually did moves on it uh Nick Jackson I believe or maybe it was Matt it was probably Matt uh he had a power bomb to yo on the apron um and uh he, and yo I actually like the story here of yo trying to fight back um the other spot where I think the Matt Jackson got hurt, uh, Kefe, was when Yo was fighting out of the, the, the Bucks corner. Yo, um, it, countering Matt, charging at him, pulled the bottom rope down, and Matt just went flying over and hit the Matt outside back first. Um, I may, have, it, it could have been Nick. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Matt. Um,. I, I forget, because I... Who was the one wearing the bandana? No, yeah. Matt was the one who got hurt, because he had the one had the long hair. He had his hair flowing out. Nick was the one who had, it in, like, a little bon ponytail, so you could definitely tell which one was which. Um, sh they were working a knee hold, like, on the back real briefly, and Sho was like, fuck this, and went in there and punched it. Didn't work out, because Nick ended up doing the same thing. Um, but I liked... I, but they, they kept him separate. Um, Matt Jackson tried to hit a power bomb on the walkway like they did with Rocky Romero onto Yo. Yo countered, hit a backdrop, and I think this is where the real part of the back injury for Matt Jackson took place. Um, Matt, uh, Nick Jackson went for a dive to the outside, uh, not too long after. Uh, Matt had him, but then Yo got out of the way. And Nick ended up landing on Matt. Which, in terms of kayfabe, the storyline back, probably wouldn't have made it any better. Yo finally tagged in Sho. And, um... And Sho was a house of fire. Hitting freaking Hurricane Rana's, suplexes, and everything. Uh, basically kicking... Kicking some ass. Um, even a nice little looking little super kick while they were on their knees. I have to admit. <coughs> um... So, uh, yeah, it was just a really nice worked match. Eventually, you no, know, thing, things eventually had to break down. At one point, Sho hit a uh, German suplex on both the Bucks at the same time. So, like, kind of like a double German suplex. Um, he went for a... Uh, and that the, I, this may have been the finish, their finisher, I, I forget. Because I haven't watched a lot of Rapunky 3K matches. So, I'm not too familiar with these guys. So, give me... To, I haven't been watching New Japan lately. I... You could plain obviously tell. Um, so, Sho went for like a. He did. He put him in the tilt a whirl powerbomb kind of move. 
Um, but he put him on his shoulders, kind of like A-Train's old uh, train attack finish, where he would land on his knees and the opponent's back would land on his shoulder. He kept him there, though. Uh, Yo came in, charged, and hit him. I forget what the name of the fin the, the move is, but it was a cool-looking move. And basically, it was kind of like a reverse suplex while Yo came in and attacked uh, one of the Jacksons' head. I'm pretty sure it was Nick. Matt came in. Um... And attacked them. Uh, sh eventually, though, uh, things came down to um, a, to a super kick party. Uh, of course, this is a Young Bucks match. Of course, they come down to super kick party. Hit a super kick on Sho, super kick on Yo. Yo came in with a cool looking counter, sort of hit it, and they and they hit super kicks on Nick, and almost had him there for a win after a nice little combination. Uh, I think they went for like a 3D move in an account, and it and it backfired. Um, so eventually, things came down to Matt Jackson and Yo, the two cripple, the cripples of the match. Um, uh, it was it was like a story of whose back was going to give out first. That's basically what the story of this little back and forth here was. Again, a nice story. What I liked about this match wasn't all the moves as cool as it was. It was the story they told of whose back is going to give out first. Eventually, that answer would be Yo, because uh, because uh, Matt powerbombed in the corner. They uh, The Bucks went for the um, the draping DDT senton uh, maneuver. Yo kicked out, because apparently he's made of steel. Um, and even the finish of the match was very nice. At one point, they did go for a, uh, a more bang for your bucket and work. Um, but, uh, Yo, Yo, uh, believe it or not, they, Yo and Show did lose the match. They didn't, um, yeah, I'm spoiling it here. So, yeah, they, they went for a more bang for your buck. Um, Yo countered into a pin. Uh, they, he went for a Boston Crab on Matt Jackson. Um, and then Sho got a, a, another Boston Crab on Nick Jackson. Um, eventually, though, um, Nick countered, uh, pushing Sho into Yo. Um, then they, in a nice little se uh, sequence, Nick Jackson kept on kicking Yo in the back of the, in, in his back. Not to be outdone, Sho kept on kicking uh, Matt in the back. So, uh... Man, these are asshole teammates. Just let their their partner get beaten on like that. Um, after a cool looking dive to the outside uh, by Nick Jackson, again it went back to Matt and Sho. I mean Yo, uh, Yo tried to do his little cool little counter thing again, where he would he'd get knocked to the outside, come back in and go for a super kick. But his back was just fucked by this point. Um, the Bucks went for a uh, Melter Driver. And then Nick Jackson, who I think actually was the legal man here. I don't know who. Um, it, things just broke down. We didn't know who was who. Anyway, Nick Jackson, he got a sharpshooter on Yo, and then Yo tapped out. This was a great match. Uh, one, of, one of the best matches of the night, though not nearly as much as three. three well, out of all the great matches, is probably number four or five. And that is not a, that's not a knock on them at all. Because this match was awesome. Um, out next, and I am kind of sad though that um, the Young Bucks won the titles. Mainly because, first of all, I don't know what the Bucks can do at this point. Aside from just straight up going into the main tag team division. Maybe gaining a little bit of weight. But at the same time, unless they don't, if they, if they want to go to WWE, um, you know, fine. But if they don't, you know, staying in New Japan is probably the best place to stay. Um, which means probably like 20 more tag title range from them in the future. Um, out next, and then I was actually thoroughly impressed by Yo and Sho. So, you know, good for a Pungi 3K. You actually impressed me. Out next was the, uh, well, what was the name of that? It was the Never Open Weight Six Man Tag Team Titles. Uh, basically anybody of any weight, and I figured out what the, what Open Weight meant. Because I was like, too many titles, like what the hell do they mean? The open weight title basically means anybody of any weight could go for it. Light heavyweights, uh, heavyweights, uh, fat people, midgets. Probably not midgets, but um, you know what I mean. So, for and there was four teams. It was a gauntlet match 
for it was a gauntlet match for the titles. Uh, it was um, the cha there was the champions and just to name all the participants. The champions, uh, Bad Luck Fale, Tama Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga representing uh, Bullet Club, Taguchi uh, Ry Ryusuke Taguchi, Juice Robinson and Toki Makabe, um, which I think they called it like to to which I think was like nicknamed like Taguchi Planet or something like that. <laughs> um, then there was uh, Trent Beretta, Toru Yano, and Tomohiro Ishii uh, representing Chaos. And uh, Hanson, Raymond Rowe, and, and Michael Elgin against Taichi, uh, Takashi Iuz Izuka, and Zack Sabre Jr., uh, representatives of Suzuki-kun. That's like... Five teams... That's five teams right there. There are a lot of participants in this match. Um, so we started out with uh, tight with uh, the members of Suzuki Goon and the and the uh, and, and with Takashi Izuka just going absolutely batshit insane in the crowd for whatever reason. Out out next came uh, War Machine, which is which is what Hanson and Rowe are, and Michael El Big Mike Michael Elgin. Of course, Michael Elgin, I think. Mike Elgin uh, recently um, has been through some shit. Uh, if you're hardcore um, New Japan fans and Michael Elgin fans in terms of his wrestling, you know what he, you know what's been going on with his student and everything and the rape allegations. Not against Elgin, but against his student. And Elgin supposedly not giving a shit. People, some people are not big fans of Michael Elgin right now. War Machines two, War Machine are two of the guys, and they're probably happy that they're not um, staying. In New Japan, working with Michael Elgin, because uh, they're going to WWE. They're going to be in NXT soon. Um, but yeah, they called uh, like Michael Elgin like a motherfucker. I think uh, during the New Japan Tag League, uh, Suzuki Goon went on right in the attack on War Machine and Elgin. Um, Elgin, of course, went for the power game early. Hit the um, the the Samoan drop fallaway slam combo. Um, which, was, of course, is always impressive for Michael Elgin to see. And uh, Michael Elgin, say what you will about his per him personally, he's a, he's actually a great wrestler. Um, and a strong man wrestler. Um, Hanson, uh, this is hilarious, Hanson used his giant-ass beard to basically scrape it over the face of... Um, of uh, Takashi Izuka. Um, while Takashi Izuka was attacking, uh, and so at one point, Takashi Izuka um, had uh, had um, t had the referee distracted when he was attacking the two guys on the apron, uh, Elgin and uh, Hanson. Uh, while Ray Rowe was trapped in Suzuki Gun's corner, and Taichi hit him with a with a hammer. Uh, we got him a hammer shot, and I think just, like, scraped it into his face, which I pretty much uh, had Suzuki Goon in charge for a little while. Um, I'm always amazed how freaking agile Hanson is, because he did, like, a freaking hand... Not a handstand, but, like, a handstand, like, somersault thing. I don't know. He tagged in... Uh, hand, uh, he tagged in uh, Hanson, who I think out of all the guys... who I think out of the two who have the most potential on War Machine... Hansen is the one that has the most potential as a singles guy if WWE ever wants to go with him. Um, which we was seen here in this match when he went up against Zack Sabre Jr. He did like a, a tilt... He did a constant tilt-to-world backbreaker combos. Um, he went up against Taichi. Um, it was just a nice little match. Uh, Hansen... Not Hansen. Raymond Rowe went up top for a moonsault. A guy that big should not be doing mood salts. But uh, this match was awesome. Well, well, not this match. This this was awesome right here. Um, in terms of the the power game, I'm I'm sorry. I'm like I said. I'm just going in and out of it, aren't I? Um, Hanson and Rowe went for their finish. Suzuki uh, Takashi. While the referee was either distracted or knocked down, I didn't see the referee here. Takashi Zuka got that little silver hand thing of his and kept on attacking the members of War Machine and uh, Michael Elgin. 
Um, at one point, Zack Sabre Jr. went for the uh, triangle chokehold. Um, Hanson tried to power out of it by uh, getting a powerbomb style move, but that didn't work. And Zack Sabre Jr. ended up uh, basically knocking out uh, Hanson, which was cool for Zack Sabre Jr. I'm, I'm glad Zack Sabre Jr. is getting this push in New Japan. Out next came Toru Yano. Um, yeah, Toru Yano, Tomohiro Ishii, and Trent Barretta. <clears throat> uh, they, uh, and to kind of throw it back in their faces, they really quickly eliminated Suzuki-gun. Takashi Izuka tried to get that hand, metal hand of his, trying to hit uh, Yano. Um, Yano pushed Taichi in the way. Um, Taich, uh, accidentally shoved Taichi, I think. And then, <coughs> again, while the referee was distracted from all the chaos that was happening outside the ring, Yano got a blow blow in on, um, on, Yon, on uh, Taichi and pinned him. Out next came... Um, Came Togi Makabe, uh, to, uh, Rusuke, 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 Rusuke Taguchi, I keep saying Rusuke, Rusuke Taguchi, and, uh, Juice Robinson, and apparently there was like a fucking, I don't know, at some point there was like a volleyball came in the ring, or a soccer ball, I don't know, I think it was Juice Robinson's thing, but, uh, I, I was like, that was weird, um, Yano, of course, tried to cheat and hit him with, uh, one of the corner, um, Corner paddings. Um, Juice Robinson was the star of his team. Clearly, um, he got in some off. Uh, he got in some offense early. Uh, Togi Makabe then got in offense. Then it was uh, Taguchi. It was just a nice little back and forth mat, uh, mini match, I should say, in the in the main match. Um, now with uh, and then uh, yeah, what am I talking about? Oh, God. I really need, do need to eat, don't I? I haven't had lunch. Damn my stomach. Taguchi eventually got in a... a I, know it's called, I know it's called a hip attack. I think they only call it a hip attack because they can't call it what it actually really is called. That's an ass attack. Taguchi went, did a springboard ass attack onto Yano. I do not want to be Yano's face. I will say that. that I will say that much. Um... Taguchi did his best Shinsuke Nakamura impression. He went for a, uh, I, I, not a Kinshasa, being that it is uh, New Japan, uh, it, what they would call the Bomae Ni, which is what the finish was called. Yano ruled him up while he was going for the knee, and uh, Taguchi lost the match uh, for his team. Out next came Bullet Club, which were the tag team champions, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and Bad Luck Fale. Um, this was really nice. I was actually somewhat surprised that Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga were not wearing face paint as they usually do. Uh, Gorillas of Destiny usually wear face paint in their matches. Not this time. Um, they worked a nice game here with, with, uh, Ishii getting the most amount of offense here. Hell, Ishii pretty much destroyed everybody on, on Bowl Club at one point. Uh, killed Tonga Loa, killed Tama Tonga in the corner with the exposed turnbuckle padding, the or the exposed turnbuckle. Even got a suplex on a bad luck fallé for a guy. It took him a few tries, but for a guy as big as fallé, it is tough to get a suplex onto uh, on onto him. And but Ishii did it. Ishii's one tough son of a bitch. I'll tell you that much. He's probably a very stiff wrestler, um, if I had to guess. Um, but eventually, they got the advantage. Um, well, Bull Club, I should say. Um, they they worked the back and forth with Trent, who also... Uh, Trent was the biggest star in the match, uh, in the overall, of his overall team, I should say. Because the idea, because the story that they were going is Trent was going after his first bit of New Japan gold. Uh, which was, that, that was the story. Uh, Girls of Destiny at one point went for a, a back suplex off the top rope, hit knocked off Tama Tonga, hit Tonga Loa off the top rope, landed in the ring, went for a moon salt. Tama Tonga came in with a stun gun. I'm like, damn, that, that's like a Randy Orton esque style move when Randy Orton did the 
the uh, when Evan Bourne, the for, uh, now Matt Seidel, went for it went for an airborne on on Orton, and Orton got an RKO on him. That was pretty awesome. Um, uh, sorry about that. My throat's killing me a little bit. Oh shoot. Uh, sorry about that. <coughs> um. But eventually, after a little bit of back-forth exchange, Trent Beretta got the finish in with, um, on, uh, on Tama Tonga, got him with the, uh, go the Dude Buster, which is basically, um, God, I can't exactly describe what the Dude Buster is. You, you'd have to look it up for yourself. Out next came, uh, and next was also a great match. This was a good match here, the Gauntlet match. Out of all the matches on the main card, this was the least good. But that, but it was still a nice, solid match, and it was fun. More than anything, it was fun, in my opinion. Um, next was a great match. It was Kota Ibushi against Cody Rhodes. I know they all can only call him Cody because of the whole Rhodes thing and WWE being a bunch of asses. But um, but yeah, it was. But yeah, Kota, Cody Rhodes versus Kota Ibushi. Um, this match, this was a great match. Much like with the Young Bucks match, what made it great was not so much that it was a bunch of high-flying moves, a, cra a bunch of crazy shit, even though there was crazy shit in this match. It wasn't just a bunch of moves, it's the fact that they paced themselves. There was a little bit of smart booking. Um, Cody Rhodes with his blonde hair, I, I, and what, what they told us in commentary, Cody Rhodes is preparing to film a movie, which is why he has the blonde hair in the first place. Personally, I know it's weird to look at because I've known him as this one thing this entire time, but I kind of like blonde hair Cody Rhodes. He should keep that look. Uh, I Granted, it makes him look way too much like his dad, Dusty. Um, so, Cody Rhodes worked on a nice, a weird-looking leg lock, which was kind of cool. Um, helped Abushi up. Thought it was going to be a, a show of short sportsmanship, but as any member of Bull Club is, he's being an ass and decided to uh, put a throw it in, Cody, in Coda's face. Abushi did not take kindly to that. Attacked Cody, knocked him to the outside, hit a, and this is a, one of the parts of the match I really liked. He had a plancha over the top rope onto Cody. However, Cody bumped into Brandy, and uh, basically, Kota Abushi landed on Brandy Rhodes as well. So, it looked like Brandy Rhodes got knocked out. Kota Abushi, he was like sad over the whole thing. He, um. He, um. Uh, he was even he picked up uh, Brandy to take her to the back, a la Hulk Hogan and Miss Elizabeth, when the night that Savage turned heel when they were facing the uh, Towers of Doom, uh, which was uh, Big Boss Man and uh, Akeem, if I recall, former one man gang. Um, and then as he was doing that, Cody Rhodes punched him right in the face. Rhodes bent down as to check on his wife, and then we saw them both laughing, basically saying Brandy Rhodes played heel, and Kota and Kota Ibushi fell for it. Um, Cody Rhodes came in, hit the disaster kick, did not get a pin. Um, I know what's been called other names, but I'm calling it disaster kick because it looks because that's a cool name. Um, went for a couple submissions for a little, not a submission, but it went for like a nice little uh, arm lock for a while. Um, Cody Rhodes then got a steel chair, and thanks to Brandon Rhodes distracting the ref, Cody Rhodes hit Kota Ibushi on the back of the head, protected, of course, protected chair shots to the back of the head, and um, and hit, and uh, went for a third shot, this time with the referee watching, went for a straight-up shot. Ibushi got out of the way, thank God, he did not die. Uh, then went for his signature dive off the top uh, turnbuckle, middle turnbuckle connector thing between the, the the turnbuckle and the uh the ring post uh so a little bit of high flying there for abushi um at one point abushi tried to suplex cody in the ring but that it, but again brandy was the interference um and uh and cody you know hung up hung him up on the top rope with his face later in the match a brief uh, briefly later um, Kota Ibushi went for a, a powerbomb on the turnbuckle, which would have been disastrous for Cody. Thankfully, that didn't happen. What happened was actually even worse. Cody Rhodes hits the, uh, Cody Rhodes hit the, uh, the crossroads finish, um, 
From the turnbuckle onto the mat on the floor, Ibushi landed right on top of his fucking head. <coughs> He's like RVD. He always seems to perpetually land everything on top of his head. How this guy is not a cripple, cripple or brain dead right now, I have no idea. This took out Abushi for a little while in terms of um, in terms of him doing any real offense. Cody Rhodes then hit a uh, eventually hit uh, Cody Rhodes hit a Hurricane Rana off the top rope, which is something that we never see Cody Rhodes do. Cody Rhodes went for another crossroads in the ring. Abushi countered, got him on his shoulder, and then and then threw. Thrusted him into a long dart in the in the corner in one of the corners, which was cool. Um, they went for some back and forth uh, slaps to the face, which was also nice. Um, Kota Ibushi eventually got his power bomb. Did not pin Cody Rhodes. Um, he went for a knee to the face, which, if I recall correctly, there's a there's a name to that move. God, what what's it called? There's a name to that move. It is called. Um, a straight, uh, not a straight jacket, um, no, I'm thinking of the later in the match. Um, it's called, um, yeah, I, 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 there's a new name to the move. I'm calling it the knee strike, because I can't remember what the name of the goddamn move was. He got a knee, he tried to go for a knee strike several times on Cody Rhodes right in the face. Cody Rhodes kept on, um, kept on, uh, countering, um, event, he, at one point even headbutting him right in the stomach. Uh, eventually the finish was Abushi went for a straight jacket German, got it, got the knee in a Cody's face, which looked like it knocked the poor guy out. And then Cody, and then Abushi went for probably one of the swifter, um, Phoenix splashes I've ever seen, which was awesome the way it looked. I mean, man, the way it looked, it looked like he just about killed Cody Rhodes. This was going to be for the Ring of Honor Championship, but that was before Cody Rhodes lost the title to Dalton Castle at Final Battle the month previous. Or should I just say last month? Um, so yeah, there was that. Next up was uh, the IWGP Tag Team Title Match. The Killer Elite Squad against Evil and Sonata. Um, representing, of course... Suzuki Goon, God, man, there's so many members of Suzuki Goon. Wait, no, wait, no, no, no. I'm an idiot. They're not members of Suzuki Goon. They're members of Los Ingos, Los Ingo Monables. And by the way, to correct myself earlier, I said Bushi was a member of Suzuki Goon. That is wrong. He's a member of Los Ingos Monables de Japón. Um. So basically, and which is shortened to Lij. Um. So, uh, with that said, um, this match here was actually, um, was actually, uh, uh, I know some people may not like the match too much. I, because they you know, thought it was boring and everything. I liked the match. Basically, what happened is, um, Killer Elite Squad attacked before the bell, and as the bell rung, they hit the Killer Bomb, which is like a, which is like an assisted power bomb from, uh, from Lance Archer and helping out was uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. Um, hit the the killer bomb on Evil for a near fall and and almost got him in like the first six seconds of the match. If once if it was if it wasn't for Sonata making the save and, and Kes Killer Elite Squad they they just beat the ever loving shit out of Sonata after a while. They they isolated Evil. Um, but Sonata got the tag, but but then Sonata just kept on getting his ass kicked by the uh, by the Killer Elite Squad, and the Killer Elite Squad didn't just kick the hell out of Bush, uh, Bushi, out of Sonata and Evil. They also kicked the crap out of all the young lions at ringside, arguing with the referee, getting in his face, bully Ray style, um, attacking all the young lions. I mean, they these guys came across as the true quintessential asshole. And uh, yeah, there were. It was it was a, it was nice to watch, but you know they came across as you know dicks because oh that, that I guess that was the point to come across as the the supreme jackasses. Um. So um. With that said, uh, goddamn. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I was sitting on my foot. My foot kind of fell asleep.
So, uh, apologies there. Um, so the, eventually they, they went for some shit. Um, uh, Suzu, uh, Sonata tried to hit an Enziguri to take out, um, and, and he took out, uh, I think he actually went, no, I'm thinking of a Naito in the main event. I apologize. Uh, Sonata had got an Enziguri. He got Smith, um, on, uh, I think he got Smith on Archer, actually. No, he got Smith on Archer. He had an Enziguri on, uh, on Archer. He took out Smith at a dropkick and finally got the tag after uh, seemingly forever of getting the shit kicked out of him. Um... Well, try to get the tag, I should say. Archer took out Evil. And, uh... I think he even... And then they just went that friggin' choking the hell out of, uh... Out of Sonata with his shirt, which... You know, that has to be a little bit, uh... Disrespectful. What did you say? But, yeah, this was basically a beatdown. This was the story of Underdog in, um... In, um... God, uh, let's see. This was the story of an underdog in uh, Sonata and Evil going up against the much bigger, buffer-looking guys of, um, of, um, yeah, the much bigger, buffer-looking guys of KES. Uh, I can't remember too many details of the match, sadly. Uh, because it was just a, it was just a, just a beatdown for the longest time. Eventually, Evil finally got the hot tag in, and it was a hot tag, to be fair. Um, and, uh, he got a, he even hit a, he hit a senton, took out Smith, um, or, uh, Lance Archer at one point went for a choke slam, countered him into a lariat, uh, it took three lariats to take Archer down. Archer, Lance Archer is a tall guy. Um, so Archer, and this was another another great spot. Um, it looked more like a suplex, but the the intent was uh, Archer. It was a little bit botched, but Archer took out um, took out um, Evil for a little bit with a top rope. Spanish fly. You never see that from a guy the size of Lance Archer, but that's exactly what happened. Um, so, um, with that said, um, yeah, he got Archer, he got Evil with a Spanish fly, which was a great looking spot, I have to say. Um, Sonata and Smith got the tags in because apparently, uh, Archer and Evil were taken out of the game right there. Um, they, the finish of the match, uh, oh, by the way, Killer Elite Squad also went for a heart attack, which was cool. Sonata, uh, tried to fight back, um, <coughs> um, got a killer bomb, but Sonata actually kicked out, um, they went for another, Evil came in for the save, and, um, recording a video here. And, uh, Evil came in and, um, rammed KES into, into each other, hit, hit the move, everything is evil, then, um, LNJ, I guess in a tribute to, uh, Gallows and Anderson, hit a magic killer on Smith for a two, uh, two for a two count, then Sonata hit the Muto-esque moonsault from the top rope and got him with the and got him with the pin this was actually a pretty good match i gotta say i had a lot of fun with it the beatdown was absolutely awesome especially seeing him beat up the long, the young lions that was uh that was a treat uh no disrespect to the young lions certainly they have to try hard um so yeah with that said um this video is already going on long enough and i don't want to go too long so I will see you guys. There's going to be a part two to this review because I don't want to go two hours because there's definitely a lot more detail to be done. Next time, I will uh, see you guys with a part two of, of uh, my Wrestle Kingdom review going over the the, the first match going over um, Minoru Suzuki and Haruki Goto, then going on to the four uh, main events, which was, or I would call them main events, which was the Fatal 4-Way Junior Heavyweight Tag Title Match. Um, Jay White, Hiroshi Tanahashi, 
Chris Jericho and uh, Kenny Omega, and of course the main event, Tetsuya Naito and Kazuchika Okada. So until then, guys, I'll see you later with part two of Wrestle King my Wrestle Kingdom 12 review. Until then, uh, later. By the way, my ratings will be in both videos. So just to get let you know, so that way you don't miss anything. Okay? Later, guys.